The Green Bay Packers have made an important roster adjustment ahead of their Week 7 clash against the Houston Texans at Lambeau Field. On Saturday, the team announced the elevation of fullback Andrew Beck from the practice squad to the active roster marking the third consecutive week. Beck has been promoted for game day. Beck has already contributed both on offense and special teams, playing a total of 20 snaps in previous games against the Los Angeles Rams and Arizona Cardinals, with tight end Luke. However, this is Beck's final allowable elevation for the season. If the Packers want him to play again in 2024, they'll need to officially promote him to the 53-man roster. This move highlights how crucial Beck is becoming in Lafleur's system, especially with key injuries forcing depth challenges. Alongside Beck's promotion, the Packers have elevated several other practice squad players this season, including quarterback Sean Clifford twice, and cornerbacks Robert Rochelle and Kamal Haddon. The team is focused on utilizing its depth to navigate injuries and keep momentum in their favor. Three reasons why the Packers will beat the Texans. As the Packers prepare to extend their winning streak to three games, they'll be facing a red-hot Houston Texans team that's won three straight. However, there are several reasons why Green Bay is poised to come out on top this Sunday. 1A Josh Jacobs led rushing attack. With the Texans missing key defensive players, Aziz al Shaerni and Henry Tooto concussion the Packers' strong running game led by starback Josh Jacobs is expected to shine. Tooto and al Shaer lead the Texans in tackles, so their absence leaves a big hole in Houston's defense. Neville Hewitt and Jake Hansen, who are expected to start in their place, lack the same impact, combining for only nine tackles this season. Houston's run defense hasn't been stellar even with their starters. They rank 17th in the league, allowing 455 yards per carry. In three of their last four games, they've given up over 150 rushing yards, including 158 yards to the Jaguars and 150 yards to the Bills. Enter the Packers' dynamic ground game, which ranks second in the league with 1672 rushing yards per game. Green Bay has rushed for at least 160 yards in four of their six games this season, and their total of 1,003 rushing yards is the highest for the franchise since the Vince Lombardi era in 1963. Jacobs, in particular, has been a force ranking third in the NFL with 353 rushing yards after contact. The Packers' combination of explosive plays and methodical grinding runs makes their rushing attack a C. Texans defensive coordinator Matt Burke emphasized the challenge Jacobs poses. He's really good at falling forward for those extra yards. There's a lot of hidden yardage in that run game, so we need to be physical and disciplined in stopping him. Two Jordan loves play-action prowess. The Packers' lethal rushing attack sets up their highly effective play-action passing game led by quarterback Jordan Love. According to Pro Football Focus, Love ranks fourth in the NFL with a 1275 passer rating on play-action passes, making him a significant threat whenever the Packers fake a run. Their run game marries very well with their play-action game. Burke explained, You step up to stop the run and suddenly there's space behind you for Love to exploit. He's got a good arm and isn't afraid to push the ball downfield. The Texans' secondary will be undermanned, as standout rookie cornerback Kamari Lassiter and veteran safety, Jimmy Ward will both miss the game. Lassiter, who ranks first among all cornerbacks in completion percentage allowed, will be replaced by D'Angelo Ross, an undersized corner who has only made three career starts. With these key defensive players sidelined, Love will likely have ample opportunities to exploit mismatches in Houston's secondary. Three Texans missing their biggest offensive weapon. The Texans' offense has been one of the league's most surprising units this season, but they'll be without their top receiver Nico Collins, who is on injured reserve with a hamstring injury. Collins leads the NFL with 567 receiving yards and has been a major deep threat for rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud. Even while missing time, Collins has been one of the league's most explosive playmakers, but his absence leaves a significant void in Houston's passing attack. Stephon Diggs, the Texans' other top receiver, is still a dangerous target ranking second in the NFL with 21 plays of 10-plus yards this season. However, without Collins drawing attention, Green Bay's defense can focus more on Diggs, which could limit his impact. Stroud, who has been impressive in his rookie season, will face a Packers defense that thrives on creating turnovers and making critical stops. Packers defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley has built a unit that's aggressive and opportunistic, and Stroud will need to be cautious against a defense that flies to the ball and capitalizes on mistakes. Texans offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick emphasized ball security. Every mistake against this defense is costly. 
Our whole focus this week has been on protecting the ball.